first. Distract target. Then block his blind jab. Counter with cross to left cheek. Discombobulate. Dazed, will attempt wild haymaker. Employ elbow block. And body shot. Block feral left. Weaken right jaw. Now fracture. Break cracked ribs. Traumatize solar plexus. Dislocate jaw entirely. Real talk about trading by 13 Market Moves, guys. Today, we have a very special subject that is devoted to in-depth study of a psychological and emotional impact of trading on grown men that are trying to be successful in trading. We're gonna use this real life case of a trader that just missed a $987,000 trade, literally by 12 hours. Guys, if you start with 13 Market Moves coaching program, you've got to have a mind of a Navy SEAL. Now, you may or may not know much about Navy SEALs, but this is the toughest program out of any military unit that you could possibly take a challenge on. And most of the Navy SEALs, during their first six months of program, training program, they fail. 80% will fail as a Navy SEAL. And the number one thing that they do during their first week of program is they test your commitment. They test your commitment to the program. They make you so miserable during your first week of training that naturally a lot of guys want to quit right there and then during the, during the first week. And if they don't, ultimately you will face what's called the hell week, where basically you sleep four hours a day and they put you through a challenging endurance test, basically physical activity, 20 hours a day. So by like your second day, okay, you slap four hours and you're basically 30 hours of physical training at that point. Most of the people just want to give up. So it really tests the level of commitment. Okay, how serious do you want to be a Navy SEAL? How serious do you want to succeed in trading weekly options? Well, people say, oh, oh it's impossible to trade weekly options. Well, some people say it's impossible to become a Navy SEAL because of how difficult it is. The first six months of training, most of the people at some point that thought they were tough as shit, they will fail. They're Olympic athletes that actually attempted to become Navy SEAL and they failed. So trading weekly options is about as challenging of an endeavor as you can ever pursue in, in, in your life as a human being. I've had heart surgeons with incredible IQ that has failed. People that have accomplished many in other businesses that have failed. Guys, this is one of the most challenging things you will ever attempt in your life. So no matter how tough you think you are, you better pay close attention to this video because I'm going to show you some emotional insights that if you are serious about getting successful at trading weekly options, I'm going to show you some key components that you should be focusing on. But the question is, why did this trader miss $987,000 payday by 12 hours? Well, can all be summarized right here on the slide. Number one, it's the lack of commitment to the 13 Market Moves Coaching Program. Number two, it's because of the emotional weakness. I'm gonna break it down like this to make it simple. Okay, so many people will dream and attempt to become a Navy SEAL. Many will try, but only few will make it. Only few will start with 13 Market Moves Program and will get to a point where they're making a million plus, 10 million plus, 30 million plus. There's only gonna be a few of you guys. So this is not a video for somebody that wants to learn how to make a couple hundred dollars a day. Okay, you can do it with a bunch of other programs. This is a video for those that want to start with 50K, 100K, take their account to million dollars, 10 million, 30 million, 50 million plus. So I just want to talk to the very few of you that want to understand what does it actually take by showing you why some of people are so close. They're so close. They're within hours. They're sometimes they're within minutes from nailing it, the ultimate trade that's going to allow them to break through and they give up. It's just like a Navy SEAL, okay? No, no sleep for days. Sitting in the rain, out there, in the field, waiting for the target. No food, 
Miserable conditions, all right? And at one point, he just says, you know what? Hell with it. Hell with it. He quits 30 minutes before he would have been able to go on for another few days and make it to another part of the training. So no matter how tough you are, guys, this thing as challenging as you can possibly face. And most of the challenges if you overcome as a trader when you're trading weekly options, this is going to be your ticket to go to the next level in trading. So let's specifically look into all the details of what has transpired. So the trader signed up to trade with a coach, which happened to be me. So I, this is how I know all the details exactly what happened. But he jumped out of a million dollar trade right before it actually happened. So. I'm gonna walk you through what you could be expecting if you're trading with me as a coach. Start communication on May 19th. I'm asking you a basic question I normally would do with any trader that starts with me. Are you ready to take 54K to 500K? Can you trade options on futures? Are you actively trading in front of a computer? Are you gonna be unavailable at any point in time for flights or meetings or so on? I need to know that information ahead of time, right? I'm assuming that you know how to place option trades and rely on your fast execution of trades. On average, I'm letting him know our whole time on trades is going to be 24 to 48 hours. Okay, but at some times we will take last hour trades with same day options expirations. I'm asking him any questions. So his response is this. Now, keep in mind these responses, all right, because I mean, th these responses are, they're important. Okay, so he's answering actively trading always. He says always in front of my computer. He's like, I'm very fast at executing. He's always in front of his computer. He's very fast at executing. I'm responding, great, excellent. Boom, we got that out of the way. We're good to go, right? Well, just hold and see. I'm trying to follow up with a few things. Getting him premiered that, look, emotions are gonna be running wild. So staying calm is the best way to handle things. Okay, and the best way to do it is to focus on charts and the overall move. Do not focus on immediate price action. Focus on where things could be going overall in the next 24 to 72 hours. In which response, guys, which is always a red flag, okay, please leave everything you've learned before you come in to trade with 13 market moves. Okay, he's like supply zones, demand zones, guys, all of this, okay, just forget it. If you're gonna chase supply demand zones, you're gonna miss on the big move, all right? And look at what he says, guys. 500K would be a dream. So I'm letting him know I'm quite confident taking this account, helping him take the account from 50K to 500K in 10 to 14 days. And he's saying 500K would be a dream. Like, is this a Navy SEAL mentality? Please don't be showing up, okay, doubting that the program will help you make 500K. I had numerous, numerous, numerous traders that have done it in the last few years. So the problem is not whether you're going to make 500K. The problem is, okay, how many attempts is it going to take for us to get there? How tough emotionally are you going to be? Are you going to chicken out? And you're going to see the first sign that somebody ultimately will chicken out is they're going to feed you all this bullshit. Uh, they're going to say, no, I'm never going to chick out. This is the number one guy that will actually chicken out. So um, keep some of these responses in mind because it really, you know, it really communicates a lot, okay, whether somebody is mentally ready or not and so maybe it can apply to you but the point is how can you improve on these things okay so i'm also letting him know the worst exit is when you hold puts and market bounces more than expected and you jump out because you panic so his response to that is yeah that's where my weakness has been but as per your videos focus on the bigger move let's do this so i mean he's quite I mean, he sounds like he's ready to go. He sounds like he's ready to make stuff happen. Okay, then we discuss some other things, such as a question I often get, like, hey, should I put the order in at limit of market? And I basically answer him very simple, okay? It depends on what, what instrument we're trading, right? If we're trading SPY puts, and the ask is 137 and the bid is 134, and like, what the hell? We're gonna go ahead and put a market order because if the market is moving fast, sometimes magnitude could be 60 points in 45 minutes. Well, you don't wanna miss out on a $28,000 trade because you're trying to get a fill in, at the mid here at like, let's say $1.35, and the trade just runs away. And then you're looking at it and you're like, oh my God, it already dropped 30 points. What am I gonna do now? Well, hell, it's too, na too late now. You're not gonna be chasing this trade. So if the spread is low, basically guys, write this down somewhere. If you're serious, you should have a notepad here, writing some of these things down. Uh, we put market orders when market is moving fast. 
and when the spread is low. Uh, now, the same is true, okay? Um, the opposite is true in case, for example, with BKNG, right? If the ask is 44 and the bid is 36.9, which often will be the case in certain strikes, right? Then try 40, uh, try to get a fill at the mean. And which his response is also, yeah, I've been there. So he's basically saying everything he is on point. His execution is fast. He's got this. He knows what he's doing. He's been through it. It's not his first rodeo, right? Uh, he knows the supply demand zone. For whatever reason, he thinks that shit is important. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring some of these, you know, issues in a little bit. Supply, uh, trading supply and demand zones. I mean, had this guy actually, as it turns out later, uh, borrowed two hundred thousand dollars from his mom, uh, which I didn't know in the beginning. Otherwise, I wouldn't trade with a guy. But the point is, he did. As a result, though, he did end up paying an entire loan off to his mom. So thanks to 13 Market Move, we got that done. But bear with the story here because I'm trying to point some things as I'm trying to scroll through the conversation here. So uh, basically, uh, I'm giving him pointers once we're already in some trades. Stay strong. Don't panic. Uh, positions will start producing by the end of the day. Um, and so at this point, the account starts to get to go negative, right? From 50K, he's maybe down 15, 20K. I'm making sure he's okay. I'm making sure he's not jumping out of any trades. Um, and he's like, no, not panicking. I keep telling myself about your 50K to 1 million video. Um, and I remember at one point your account was down 50%. So it sounds like the guy watched my videos. He knows that fluctuations could be huge in the account when you trade weekly options. It sounds just like he's telling you everything that he's on board he's 100 percent prepared just like a a tough guy would show up to a navy seal training and say hey i'm ready i'm the olympic champion Fuck it I, i'm gonna i'm gonna definitely make it as a navy seal and so this guy's like yeah i know this i got this uh, my execution is fast i've watched your videos leo let's go all right so let's fast forward a little bit okay so now uh, he's losing. We're losing some money. Market basically is going sideways, and so we're switching from puts to calls and so on. So I mean, he's making some money on some trades, like here on Tesla calls, forty-four hundred bucks. Um, it doesn't hit our target. The market starts reversing. Boom! We have to switch. We have to switch. So at this point, um, he's down thirty-one k. All right. So and at this point, look, look how this is not a mentality of a Navy Seal. He's like, hmm, okay down 31k for the day yikes so from this superhero i'm the olympic champion of the world i'm gonna pass the navy training no matter what i understand everything right he's deflating like a balloon i mean that we're half day halfway through the day on the 19th the account is down 31k so at this point this is where this olympic champion who thought he was gonna make it as a Navy SEAL is deflating like a balloon and just completely disappears on me. Guys, you cannot do that. You cannot do that just because your town is down in the morning, okay? You cannot disappear. All right, can you imagine if, if in the Navy SEAL or an operation would show up and then just decide, well, I don't know, I'm just gonna, you know, it's gonna disappear for a couple hours. Hey guys, you got this over here? I'm, I'm just gonna take off. I'm just not feeling this right now. You know, I'm just gonna, fuck, this is not a Navy SEAL mentality. What is this shit? Okay, so remember the guy, this is the same guy, okay? He's sending me messages. I've given him uh, some other trades after he was down 31K. He's sending me messages now how he couldn't get filled on GMA. So the question, what happened to this guy that's got on um, fasted execution? Now he's saying, I couldn't get filled. All right. He's worried. He's starting to send me messages like he's worried the market is going down. We're buying calls on some stuff. Okay. I'm telling him, don't worry about what the market is doing right now. Guys, if you're serious about making it big with weekly options, write this down. Don't worry about what the market is doing right now. Be ready for what it will do next. I'm telling him, get, get, get these 103 calls at the market. Question mark, meaning, did you get in the trade? Because 
As you know, if you've been training with me, you take a trade, you're supposed to send me a picture. I need to know where's your position at, what's your actual cost of entry, because it's going to differ. Your cost of entry is going to differ from another person I'm training with, because look, the market is changing every second. One guy can get filled at 210, the other guy can get filled at $1.95, another guy's getting filled at 241. So I need to know what's your cost of entry. You're supposed to send me a picture. Question mark. Nothing. If I don't know whether he took a trade or not, I have no idea, okay, how to guide this guy from there. Okay, in the Navy SEAL operation, if one guy doesn't give his location to the commander, okay, how the fuck is the commander supposed to lead him? Where is he supposed to be going next? So look what he does. He's responding. I'm driving. Hold on a second. Hold on, you driving? Hey, this is the guy that says, I'm in front of my computer all the damn time. Leo, I'm ready to go. Now he's driving. I'm like, pull over. Fuck, you told me you're in front of your computer all day. I can't, like, this is the funniest part right here. Actually, there is a funnier part than this, but guess what he's doing? Motherfucker's down 31 grand. He goes to have lunch. Yeah. I was hungry, Leo. I got out to get some food. I'm like, dude, you just missed on a, a four or five game gains. I gave you this trade right here. You didn't get filled. He says, he is a great at execution, right? Didn't get filled in the trade that you just made 5K on. The dude is going to get lunch. What the fuck? Okay, so this is probably the most expensive lunch the guy has had. 5K, 5K lunch. I hope he enjoyed it. All right, now he's like, look, I'm trying I'm trying to actually tell him, look, you cannot give up or feel sad and not focus 100% just because of a bad morning. Meaning, hey, you could have some losses in the morning, okay? But this is the point where you need to focus even more because, all right, maybe the entries were off in the morning. Maybe the market is just going sideways and the options are just decaying, okay? Maybe your entry is still where you've entered, but because of the option decaying, now you've got some losses and so on. So maybe some things are not cooperating. Maybe you got an overshoot or an undershoot type situation on a certain stock. So this is the point you really got to focus because look, when you're running a Navy SEAL operation, all right, the decisions need to be made fast and good decisions need to be made fast. One dangerous decision, okay? And you can go from missing $30,000, $50,000 of profits on your P&L for the day. So I'm telling him, look, man, you got to focus, okay? Just because the account is red in the morning, you can't be, okay? You can't go take lunches and shit, okay? And this is where the shit gets really good, okay? I mean, I'm telling that, look, chicks and food, understand this, that shit's going to have to wait till market close. So at this point, he's texting me, okay, I'm back home, too late for me to enter. At this point, I'm giving him another trade. I'm like, GME 110 calls. Question mark, did you get in? See, if you train me, I shouldn't be having to text you these things. You're supposed to execute, send me the picture. Okay, wait for third instruction, because then I'm gonna give you the target, the exit, how to split your position. So when you send me the picture, I need to understand, I need to be able to see how many contracts we're able to get. I need to see, uh, you know, the strikes. Sometimes we're going with different strikes. I need to see the cost of your strikes. I need to know this information so we can have a solid exit plan after this. So again, I'm asking him all these questions because this trade is running. Guys, this trade is running. And at this point, the guy is still not responding. He's, he just texts me, is it too late for me to enter? I'm telling him to enter in a different strike, okay? This is, at this point, this is a 20X trade. I get frustrated, I'm like, dude, this could be a 300K trade, are you serious? And so this is the point, the guy just completely disappears. I mean, this is the funniest part, okay? So he doesn't get in, he doesn't get in. This is what I hear from the guy. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this shit right here. What the fuck? Finally, after, I, you know, I'm like, dude, hey, what's going on? He finally responds like an hour and a half later. He's like, oh my God, dude, I'm sorry. I fell asleep. Hold up. Dude, you just stole me. You're in front of your computer all the time. You're fast at executing. You just went to have lunch and now you fucking fell asleep? Are you fucking serious? I mean, at that point I'm speechless. I'm like, 
But listen, I'm still, I will never give up on a student, okay? Unless they just completely, completely. And so at this point, I'm still trying to communicate with the guy and say, listen, I'm still trying to show and pinpoint some of these emotional things, all right? Uh, I'm like, well, number one, I'm, I'm like, Bro, I can't believe Mike actually let you let you into trade with me. I mean, you go take lunch, and then you fall asleep on your first day of trading when you're down 31k. That's what you do. You go take lunch, and then you fucking fall asleep. But then I'm like, listen, it's his first day. Let me just focus here. All right. For whatever reason, you know, maybe something happened. I don't know. All right. Turns out nothing happened later. But the point is. If you can't handle a 40K intraday swing, you should be asking yourself this question, okay? When the money gets big, right? When you have an account, a big account, like 10, 20 million dollars, when your daily swings could be one, two million dollars in a day, what the fuck are you going to do? Like, if you can't handle a $40,000 swing from upside to the downside in any freaking direction, emotionless, how are you ever going to trade a big account? So you have to get mentally smart. Yeah, I know for some guys, a five grand, that's all you got. For some guys, 50 grand, that's all you got. For some guys, 100 grand, that's all you got. You might have been saving that up for a long, for a long time, but it's not a reason to not stay true to the strategy 100% of the time. So Here's the bigger issue emotionally, right? So the guy's down in the morning. He's just like hell. I'm having a bad day Let me go have lunch. Let me go take a nap The biggest issue I'm telling him is how the hell are you going to stop trading and fighting for your account? Before the trading day is even over Like if you follow 13 market move strategy stay with the move You can never give up on the move stay with the move understand the move calculate the move as it progresses Okay, because that how you can have a super strong finish. So since the guy left for lunch, he missed a $5,000 trade. So now his losses would have been um, only like 26K. And then while he was asleep with his teddy bear, all right, now he, he lost $30,000 in profits on the trades I've given him while he was asleep. So technically he would have been finishing like $4,000 positive for the day. All right, but at this point, these, are, these trades I've sent him, they're done, they're gone. I understand that things like that are going to happen. Now, I'll be honest with you, I didn't have, I had some guys that fell asleep on me while we were trading together. I had some guys that had to run out through an emergency. I've never actually had a guy that on the same day, while he was down 31 grand, went to have lunch and fell asleep on the same day. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this is just crazy. Okay, so let me walk you through uh, here for the mentality part. All right, so I'm staying positive, right? But guys, I'm not going to give up on a student on the first day. I promise you, unless you're going to fuck up later, big time. You're just not taking the trades again and again. You're not listening. You're doing your thing. I'm not going to give up on you. So this is the first day. I'm, despite of the guy falling asleep and having lunch, I'm like, dude, we can still make 500K in the next 10 to 14 days. Look what he says. But right now, I'm only with 16K. Let me make the 50K back first. What kind of mentality is this? This is bullshit. This is defeated. This is a loser fucking mentality. Don't ever show up to trade with me with fucked up mentality like this. All right? And then he says, then, maybe only then, I can dream of 500K. Okay, so I mean, it's not my fault the guy goes takes a five thousand dollar lunch and a thirty thousand dollar nap that he ends up for the day at sixteen k. But like when you see some bad reviews and shit like that, stuff like that actually happens. The guys will disappear in the middle of the trading day, or especially if the day starts on the wrong side, or you know we're just not we're a little bit off on entries and the account goes red. I mean, some guys they see the account goes red like from. You know, 30k to 25k. Oh my God, they're they're missing an action. Some of these guys they can't handle a five thousand dollar swing in the in their account. I can tell you one thing for a fact: guys like this, they will never ever make big money in trading, guys. Never. So, this guy's mentality is certainly not a Navy SEAL mentality. When you trade with 13 market moves, guys, show up with a Navy SEAL 
mentality. The only way you can become a Navy SEAL, if you don't quit every day, build your emotional toughness, build your emotional strength. Because guess what? More than 90% of the people don't make it in the market, not because they don't have an understanding of charts, which is highly important, okay? But because when they're actually in this market warfare out there, because there is a war with the market every single day. And if the market is beating you up emotionally and you lose the emotional warfare, okay? There's no way for you to get your account back on track. If you let the market beat you emotionally, you will lose. So it's very important even, it doesn't matter where the account is at now, okay, maybe we, we were off on a few entries and so on. It's important, this is the most important time for you to focus, not do something else or get away and have lunch and just, you know, that's not gonna improve your account, I promise you. This is the time to be on point 100% and be committed. Be committed, catch the right opportunity, and guys, and this is this is the last trade for the day. I give the guy, I'm like, look, dude, let's move on. Forget the bullshit. All right, let's make it happen. I give him this trade to hold overnight. I'm like, dude, buy this Amazon 20, uh, 2190 calls. And this was on May 19th. I think Amazon was around like 2140 uh, or so. And so I told him to buy 10 calls. Uh, look, again, I give him another trade right here. Uh, tell him to buy $8,000 worth of contracts. Uh, the guy buys two contracts. I'm like, dude, is this the same guy that was texting me in the morning that he's fast at executing? Like, how many times did he not get into a trade already and cost him money today? But I'm like, okay, first day, I know fucking better than this, being down 31 grand ain't shit. I'm like, I know if this guy just starts listening and executing better, I know he will make money with me. All right, so despite of this, all this stuff that's happening, at the end of the day, like anybody else would just said, you know what, dude, fuck you. Are you kidding me? You fell asleep. You know, like, I am not going to give up on you as a student. You keep trying, you keep showing me, you're trying to stay tough. I will trade with you, and we're gonna make shit happen. Okay, so I give him this last trade. He buys 10 contracts. This is the next morning. Oh, look, now he's using capital letters. Oh, what happened to this? I wonder how many pills of Zoloff did it take for this shit to happen? All right, so he stacks me in the morning. Oh, yeah, now I'm Mr. 100% Focus. Okay, any idea how much the Amazon contracts would be worth? Well, now he's asking questions. No shit. He, now he appears out of nowhere. Guess why? Because Amazon is like at 2197. It's gapping up like 57 points in the morning. Um, so... I tell him to sell it because I'm expecting the reversal in the market, like a move two or a move three, basically it pops. Uh, in Amazon, we had a move two that day. It pops and it starts to sell off. And notice, as soon as he sells it, I'm giving him the same trade, right? The, the night before I give him a trade to buy Amazon calls, as soon as we sell them, I tell him to change the strike slightly, but buy puts. So buy 2170 Amazon puts, 10 contracts, same with the picture, boom, it's in. Okay, and this is how it looks. Uh, this is how the trade looks, okay? And and finally, he's happy. He's texting the capital letters uh, on this trade. He logged down like $16,000 gain, just holding the position overnight. Um, so basically, on the 19th right here, I was having him buy Amazon calls. Uh, Amazon the next day gets up uh, uh, right here at the open. This is the open. 2190 plus, 2195, 2197. We sell it right here. And then shortly after that, I tell him to buy puts. Uh, but instead of the 2,900 strike, I'm telling him to buy 2,170 uh, puts. And ultimately, we sell it right here. So just that day alone, I think he makes about 30K on Amazon. Okay, but uh, focus here. Um, the next trade I give him is, um, next trade I give him is to buy some uh, Tesla puts. And Tesla is dropping, Tesla is dropping. Uh, and now he's texting me all kind of bullshit. Tesla and NASDAQ broke out of downtrend, should we be worried? And this is where he's texting me the stuff, right? So Tesla, the entry on Tesla, that was um, Friday the 20th. The entry on Tesla was right here when Tesla was about 715, 718 area. 
basically right as the market opens okay we get in I have buy thirteen thousand dollars worth of Tesla puts in the 690 strike in this strike right here okay so he's texting me he's all happy right here right because at this point he's making about fifty sixty thousand and then it starts bouncing right so when it starts bouncing remember one of the messages I shown you I warned him ahead of time I said do not panic when stuff is going to bounce and so man as if the person just don't fucking listen you know so He's like, should we be worried? Oh my God, Tesla, Nasdaq, it's breaking out of the, the downtrend. Should we be worried? I'm like, no, stay with the trades. Uh, buy uh, more puts, okay? At that point, GME was at like 95. We bought some 90 strike GME puts. Uh, it dropped all the way to like 90 that day. And he actually made some money on the GME puts uh, before I gave him a home run trade on GME. But right here, basically, he was worried here, he was worried here, he wanted to get out here, he wanted to get out here. He just, look, he was trying to make every excuse to get out of this trade. And by a miracle of God, I've managed to just hold him to the trade. And now he's like, oh, oh, you're fucking amazing. Let's go. And then I'm explaining him the exits and he's like, huh, what do you mean? Like, I've explained him all that stuff, guys. And he's just some guys just don't listen if you want to be successful with 13 market most formula guys you have to listen you have to understand what these things mean i mean you haven't taken all the course you probably don't understand what this stuff means which by the way in the next video i'm going to try to put together uh, some really helpful tips on why trading futures are important why following futures is important uh for you as a trader overall so make sure you watch that video all right so now uh, he's up on Tesla 79,000. Uh, he makes for the day uh, so far $105,000. Uh, we've got Amazon, uh, Tesla puts. I uh, got 30 Tesla puts, which we bought. As you can see, I get him in on that Tesla contracts at $4. So the 690 strike, he was buying at $4. Right now, they're going at $30.48. And I mean, he's all over the board. He wants to get out. He wants, I mean, you have no idea, guys, how many messages this dude sent me trying to get out, you know, all these bounces. He just, he just keeps wanting to get out on the bounce. And you have to, I mean, you absolutely have to uh, just stay with the move. Stay with the move. All right. So on Amazon 2170 puts, uh, now he's making 8,000. So he made 16,000 on the calls. Now he's making 8,300 on the puts. I gave him the DE trade, which I'm not sure if I got this, but basically he messed up the DE trade. I gave him the DE trade when it was like at 360. And he finally got into it at like 325. I'm not sure how that happened, but basically this, I mean, this was a late, late entry on his behalf. I mean, he could have bought these for like, 30 cents instead he, he paid 95 cents and he finally i mean at here they're 3x but he should have been at that point at like 9x here so he's making a little bit of money here regardless of of the bad entry at this point so i mean we are at this point uh we're 219,000 profit um uh, so tesla on one strike, we're actually losing uh, 20,600. Uh, in another strike on Tesla, uh, we're making 81,000. And so this is just some of the other trades, right? We've taken some of the other trades, had some uh, GME. GME, we've had both calls and puts. So here on the puts, he's making some money. Uh, three grand, three grand. Uh, switch the strike on Amazon. He's making 17k more on Amazon. All right, so basically, I mean, the guy's up about 219,000 for the day, roughly. Okay, so had a pretty decent day. Okay, so the next day, he sent me the picture. He's like, "Hey, I've done the withdrawal from the account. So about 257,000 uh, is what he withdrew. Now these are in uh, Singapore uh, dollars, so it's about 200." 20k us i guess 225 maybe and i i'm focused on asking him like hey i told you to get your account approved for futures because it's important so he's not ready again he's like no it's still pending i'm like eh, you know he keeps asking me stuff i've already given him explanations for like i can trade spx 
All right, but he's just, I'm telling him, dude, you're missing the point, okay? I don't wanna be trading SPX. SPX doesn't catch the pre-market and aftermarket hours, all right? And the whole point of trading futures is to make sure that you're capitalizing on the biggest moves that a retail trader cannot capitalize, which is making money outside of the regular conventional market hours. See, it, it just, it shocks me. Most of the retail traders, they think, that the market hours are nine, you know, not 9.30 till four, that's it. But the reality of things that the market, the biggest moves in the market actually happen from four when the market closes till 9.30 in the morning because all the other world markets are fully operational at those times. Uh, the market in Japan opens at 8 p.m. our uh, time here in the States, Eastern time. Uh, you know, markets in uh, Australia open up, uh, uh, later in night, Europe starts opening at 3, 3 a.m., uh, 4 a.m., and so on. So these markets are responding. The futures markets are responding to what's going on worldwide. So any sort of uh, huge catalyst that could be coming out of Europe, you the only way to play that is by utilizing futures, not SPX. And I've tried to explain to them, but again, like some guys, they sign up and they just don't listen. And he's like, well... I actually borrowed money from my mom, so I paid her back. So, well, check mark for 13 market moves. Uh, we didn't know the guy borrowed 200,000 from his mom, but in two trading days, okay, just because so far he stuck to the moves, and even though the execution was sloppy as hell, he was still able to make a bunch of money to the point where he was able to return his mom the entire 200,000 uh, that he borrowed from her, apparently. So the remain is to pay you, just add, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm telling him, look, forget about it. It's not where the account is right now. It's where it's, it's, where it's going. And you gotta focus on the right stuff. Okay, so if you focus where the account is at, uh, and now this is, uh, this is May 24th. We're taking, this, we're taking some new trades on May 24th uh, with an account size of about 40K. So he basically took a bunch of money from the profits, uh, paid his mom, paid himself, and now uh, we're you know we're trading again. And this time around, uh, he's down he's down maybe 15, 20 k. When he started with a 39 k, and now all of his messages are just like, oh, Leo, my account is in red, and then I'm telling him like, dude, stop crying like a little girl, locate your balls, okay, and. He's saying, Leo, as I promised, I won't chicken out, right? When somebody starts telling you that, okay, this is like psychologically, okay, they've already given up the battle. They are basically wearing, up, wearing themselves up emotionally to where they can't focus, all right? And so I'm giving them, these are, these are the million dollar trades. I'm giving them with the money he had left in the account. Um, I'm giving them Zoom calls now. I'm giving them Zoom calls when Zoom is actually like $88. So that was the entry on Zoom. As you know, um, our Zoom target was at 107.21. Uh, the target was hit uh, 48 hours later. So this was a huge trade, uh, but he jumped out of it. Also, I gave him GME calls. Listen, on the 24th, early in the day, I'm giving him GMA calls in the hundred strike right here I'm telling him hurry hurry buy GME calls 100 strike hurry 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 I mean how can you not understand this trade is fucking important I'm telling you hurry get in now look what he's doing he's like what GME calls like he still remembers how we made money on GME puts a, a day ago so now for him to switch to like GME calls he's like what are you sure like dude i don't need you to be asking me questions whether i'm sure or not whether i said calls or puts all right i just need you to get in and execute that's the agreement that me and you had from the get-go and you told me you were great at executing instead of executing you're sending me questions back like what the hell is this so hurry 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 update again he's taking his sweet ass time and normally what happens in situations when i'm sending you hey get this do this now hurry Okay, something is about to make a big move. I want you in this trade ahead of the big move, all right? I'm sending him now 
So he bought some 100 strike finally, but look how long it took, like seven minutes. Come on, these options doubled in price since the time I sent you the message, since you fucking got in finally. I'm telling him, look, buy 105 strike. And so he actually, the great executioner that he is, he didn't listen to me on this 105 strike. If he did listen to me, guys, this guy would have made a million dollars over the next 12 to 48 hours. So I told him to buy the 105 strike, and I said, fuck, buy it now, all right? And if he listened to me, the 105 strike at that point when I gave him the alert to get in, it was going for like 40 cents. So he literally could have bought about 200 contracts in the 105 strike. Instead, he went and bought some in the 95 strike. But if he just stayed with the program, he would have had 200 105 strike contracts within the next 48 hours they were worth as much as $48, okay, the 100 strike was worth 50 bucks plus at one point. Um, and we were buying this for like $1.30, $1.40. So these trades, I mean, this was a 90X trade, guys, 90X. Um, and so if you were holding 200 contracts with me, you know I actually started scaling out this trade early when it hit 106, 110, uh, 106, 110 level. We started selling some. It wouldn't be entirely 90x because I wouldn't have him tra uh, hold the entire trade through. Actually, with some traders, I was taking some after it bounced to like 115. We we're trying to buy some puts. Uh, got back into calls, puts. So we were at that point. We we're just day trading the trade. So he probably ended up getting out if he was trading with me. He would have scaled 50 contracts, sold 50 contracts more, 50 contracts more, and 50 contracts. But some of the guys that were trading with me, they only got like 2K in this trade. They're little contracts. I mean, we had to get them out um, a little bit earlier. So the point is, if he would have just stayed with the trade, followed the program 100%, if he just had the Navy SEAL mentality on this trade right here, guys, he would have made over a million bucks. Uh, that's not getting all the way out at the top. 987,000 exactly, I've calculated that's what he would have made, okay? And this is how it looks, okay? I give him this trade right here on the 24th when GME is actually dropping. Now, not so long ago, you know, I've been a, a big advocate based on the chart uh, that GME was gonna drop substantially. Now, since then, the chart has modified. There's a lot of things that has progressed in the market. I'll post a separate video on that. But at that point, as a trader, you, you, you know, you gotta make these decisions. As a Navy SEAL, you gotta make these decisions fast. When you're on the mission, when you're on the operation, you gotta make this decision fast. So when this time it was dropping, we were actually buying calls. And you would have known that if you're an alert group, I send this message loud and clear like 20 times that day on the 24th, advising you to buy calls on GME in the 100 strike, in the 105 strike, I even uh, suggested some of you get the 110 and the 115 strikes. Now, what ends up being happening, guys, is this. You see how it was dropping and looked like it hit a bottom right here? Well, it didn't. It hit the very bottom at the end of the day. And this is where he actually jumped out. So he jumps out at the lows, doesn't say a word to me until the next day. And so he completely fucked up this trade, guys. All he had to do was just follow simple instructions. So, if you're going into training with Navy SEALs for six months, one criteria for you to be successful is you follow the instructions that you're given, okay? So you can't even do that if you can't listen. There's no way you're gonna become a Navy SEAL. There's no way you're gonna become a million dollar plus options trader. The choice is yours. And again, this program is not for everybody, just like becoming a Navy SEAL is not for everybody. You have to be emotionally strong and tough. So I ask him like, hey dude, what, what's going on? What's the deal with you? You don't listen. Uh, at that point, I was sure it was gonna be at least 150K trade. Now listen, this is on the 24th when the stock is like dropping. I'm sending him messages right here when the stock is crashing. I'm confident this is gonna be at least 150K trade. But going the wrong strike, he didn't listen to me. He bought some 95s, right? Who cares? Later he jumped out of them, turns out anyway. But I'm like, 
I'm giving you these strikes for a reason. Look right here. Send them a message. I'm giving you the strikes for this. Guys, when you trade with me, sometimes we're going to go in the money. Sometimes we're going to go at the money. Sometimes we're going to go out of the money. The reason I was going out of the money because I had everything calculated. If it was going to break above 105, it had a high probability. Shoot another 20 points at least. Okay, so, and that's the strike. That once it was going to move past that strike, it had a high probability of acceleration to the moon. And that was the cheapest strike based on how much you put in the trade. It was the cheapest priced option in relation to the gain. That was still somewhat close to the current trading price at the time, which is about 89 bucks. So he didn't listen on the strike. It completely jumped out right before y'all know what happened. I mean, y'all know what happened, right? Right, so he jumps out right here, right before this happens. And again, I'm not going to try to claim that we got out right here uh, with the entire position. I mean, we started selling right here. I mean, the stock was up at one point, 30% right here from where we were getting in. I mean, it's reasonable to start collecting some gains. So I send a message, hey, sell some. If you have a small position, sell the whole thing. I mean, if you got a big position, like a few hundred contracts, I mean, start selling some. Uh, we actually had a profitable trade right here when it shot up here, made a triple top. You can't really see it too well on this chart. We had a good, good trade on the put size. You know, I mean, this was a beautiful trade, guys. We've studied the charts. We've stayed with the trade and we got paid. Now, some of you guys maybe were getting in a little too late if you were new on Friday. So Friday trading wasn't as good, right? Because it shoots up. This is the time to collect some gains and immediately it reverses and the whole day is just basically side trends, right? Friday right here. So when it goes sideways, the options are going to decay. Very tough environment at that point to make the money. But we saw the trade right here. We saw the trade before anybody else talked about it on any other freaking channel. We told you to get in in GMA calls while the price was actually dropping. We we're three bucks off, off the lows of the day when we actually pulled the trigger on the trade. All right, so the guy disappears, all right? And, and he, this is, he admits, this is the real, um, we took a trade on CRMT, it was an earnings play. And he was all completely just, I mean, he couldn't deal with it. Uh, the loss on that trade was big. It was about 10, 20K. So he went from like 40K down to maybe uh, 20K just because of that trade. But I'm telling him, if he would have taken the Zoom calls when I told him to initially, not only this CRMT uh, loss would have been wiped out, but he would have been highly profitable. There would be no losses. He would have forgotten about the CRMT. But see, you cannot sit and dwell. Oh my God, I just lost 10, 20 grand in this trade. Oh, I don't know what's going to be next. I uh, didn't fuck. Focus. All right. I just gave you a trade that would have covered all of these fucking bullshit losses. 10, 20K. All right. If you can't handle the 10, 20K loss, guys, if it's wearing you out emotionally, all right, you cannot trade. You should not be trading. So he basically ends up didn't buy the 95 Zoom calls, which were like 13 bucks in the money, uh, 48 hours later. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing the guy has a trait, right? He, you know, he says he never chickened out, but he, what happened really, he's never taken the trade. Um, and he's saying, I'm doing my best here. Like it's day after day, Trade after trade, the guy keeps missing entries. He doesn't get filled in trades. He fills with a delay. All right, he falls, goes to lunch, falls asleep. Like the truth is, if he didn't go to lunch that day and if he didn't fall asleep, the next day on Tesla, he would have made 800K. So instead of maybe wiring $200,000 out of his account that you've seen, this dude would have been wiring like six, 700,000 out. Okay, so at this point, I'm fed up with the guy. I'm like, dude, get yourself together. I said, focus, damn it. Like he can't keep doing this sort of shit. Okay. He keeps not taking trade, modifying strikes. Uh, he keeps trading this bullshit supply demand zones. Okay. You can't like, listen, there is a reason. Okay. You borrow $200,000 from your mom. It's because trading supply and demand zones don't make you any fucking money. 
That's the only explanation why you go to your mom and you borrow two hundred thousand dollars. And yet, this guy, I mean, like if I was to insert every uh, little piece of uh, screenshot here, guys, would be sitting here for hours. But the point is, uh, he was twelve hours away from home run trade, and his emotions, the fact he <clears throat> he just couldn't take seeing his account in the red. As a Navy SEAL, you got to be able to endure pain or you will never get to greatness. You will never finish your six months program. All right. So here's the reason he quits. That's what he explains. <laughs> He's like, well, at least I'm not stressed out. Oh, the amount of stress you put me through, Leo. Oh, I would rather earn a bit than to get stressed out by you. Well, that's all I have to say to him right here. Okay. Find your balls before you sign up to trade with 13 market moves. All right. Now, this is the sort of guy, even though he made pretty big money for a trader, uh, just on the second day alone, he missed on a million dollar trade. Um, in in the following couple of days, uh, he still finished highly profitable, more than any other program would have made you in a year or two or three years. We've done it in four days with this guy completely fucking up, going to lunch, falling asleep, not taking certain trades, changing strikes, uh, missing good fills, and so on. And this is the guy that portrayed himself as a rock star. Well, guys, you want to be the rock star of trading? Okay, you show it by your actions, all right? Don't end up being this guy like this guy. It's probably going to go post a bunch of reviews. Is he going to tell the whole story? Of course not. Of course not. He's not going to say how he fucking fell asleep and he went and fucked off and had lunch and he didn't follow exactly all the instructions, okay? He's not going to say any of this. So next time you see some bullshit review of us or something, guys, think twice. There's a lot that's going on. And the reality is, okay, you're not seeing the whole side of the story. Because a guy like this, he will never admit the truth. A guy like this, he'll never admit the truth that he emotionally fell apart. So, guys, I have some news for you. If you think trading is not going to be stressful, you're 100% wrong. If you think trading weekly options is not going to challenge you emotionally to the max, you're 100% wrong. If you think that you cannot handle stress, multitasking, and being on point and focus 100% of the time, you should not trade. You should not sign up with 13 market moves. Okay. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't even be in the fucking stock market. If you want something that's stress-free, go work at McDonald's. Okay, go fucking be a yoga instructor. Uh, you know, do something that has like zero stress. Do find something and be a fucking politician. I don't give a shit. All I know is this shit ain't for you if you can't handle stress. So before you sign up, think twice if this is really for you. Okay. If you don't have the Navy SEAL trading mentality, don't bother showing up. Now, if you admit like, hey, I need some help, all right, I'm willing to listen, I'm gonna be coachable, I will execute, uh, you know, I'll study all the courses, right? This guy bought the courses, turns out, I don't have to say, he didn't even study them. Like, I'm telling the guy to focus on this move, he's like, uh, oh, I, like, guys, if this shit was easy, everybody would be doing it. There's a great amount of work to be done on your side if you want to succeed in this endeavor. And there's still going to be days when you do everything perfect, you calculate everything right, and you could still be in the red. If you can't handle it, this is not for you. I'll summarize a couple of things. Overall, I mean, this is how pathetic this is, right? The guy actually gets, I get him into the trade right here. And this is what he misses out in the next 48 hours. This is how you miss out on a million dollar trade that was delivered to you on a silver platter. So don't be that guy. Locate your balls if you want to make money with 13 market moves or don't bother showing up.
There's a few pointers I'm just going to leave you with for those of you that are serious about being the Navy SEAL of trading options, okay? Number one, make sure you locate your balls. If you're not emotionally strong, get strong. Trading with a coach can help you get strong, but you got to be willing to be coachable. You got to be willing to do things. You got to be willing to endure the pain. You got to be able to go through all of it. And don't think just trading in one day automatically is going to fix all your issues. You should not sign up unless you're willing to commit for 6 to 12 months. Okay, don't overthink trades, okay? Focus on fast execution. In other words, when we're trading, don't be sending me 100 messages, oh, why this, why that? I'll answer the questions after the market close. Okay, let's focus on execution. Let's get you in the trades. Let's get you at 98 cents before you think and send me questions and all this kind of shit, questioning, oh, calls, puts, all that shit. Oh, now the same trade is at 258. Now I'm taking some guys out at 5.5 on a 500% trade. Now to get the same percentage, you need this option value to go to, you know, 11, 12 bucks. Huge difference, okay? Lightning fast execution matters. So follow the strategy 100% of the time, right? So when he did follow the strategy 100% of the time, what happened to him on, on Friday, uh, May the 20th? He was able to wire out 257,000. Okay, what happened when he didn't follow the strategy and he jumped out of the trade on the 24th of May? Well, he missed out on the million dollar trade in the following 48 hours. Now, don't panic when the trade goes against you. As a matter of fact, you should expect that the trade will go against you. I mean, we're trading high volatile instruments, we're trading weekly options, guys. The values will change rapidly. Okay, don't trade with the money. Okay, you cannot afford to lose. All right, if you can't afford to lose $2,000 in the stock market, fucking don't be in the stock market. Go find something else to do. Go to open a business. Go, go do something besides the stock market. Stock market is going to be one of the most riskiest things you will pursue, and especially if you're trading options. Okay, so if you ain't cut out, if you can't part with a 2000 okay, don't fucking do it. All right. Learn to recognize your emotional responses and use them to your advantage. So if you are working with me over a lengthy amount of time, I'm going to help you this. I'm going to help you recognize the way your emotions are telling you what to do in order to be profitable. And once you get that skill, guys, once you get that skill, the sky is the limit. It doesn't mean you're going to get every trade right, but you will persevere the pain and you will be in a position to beat the market. Now, here's some things to help you avoid losing money. Number one, emotions will kill your trading account. That's a fact. He wanted to jump out on the bounce each and every time, okay? You cannot be jumping out on bounces when you're trading put options, all right? So emotions will kill your trading account. A change in mind based on P&L. Oh my God, I'm down 31,000. I can't take this shit no more. It will result in a loss 100% of your time. So basically you're down, let's say we're trading puts, you're down 31K. Uh, you change your mind, you go into calls. Oh shit, I mean, that's the, and then the market maybe bounces 10, 20 points and then it drops 60. Okay, that's done. Your account is done. Okay, you cannot do these sort of things. So change your mind based on your PL, based on what is it doing. Remember, multiple messages from him. Oh, yikes, my account is down. Oh, yikes, I'm down 31K. Oh, yikes, I'm down 20. Whatever, right? It's he's focusing on the wrong shit. Don't be focusing on your PL. Focus on the move. In order to focus on the move, first, you gotta understand what the hell the move is. What move are we trading? What are the components of the move? What are the time frames of the move? You got to understand this. So focus on the charts and the move instead of the PL. If you don't do that, guys, it's going to result in a loss. Changing your mind based on today's price section. Oh my God, you open your uh, account and all your positions are red because the market bounced on weak volume, 20, 30 points. And you're saying, oh my God, I'm going into calls now. Well, shit, tough luck. In the next two hours, the market is down 100 points. What are you gonna do? You've lost money on puts, which would have made you killing, but now you also lost money on calls, which is now worthless. Okay, so can't you cannot be changing your mind based on today's price action, or especially the price action in the beginning of the day. It doesn't tell you exactly what's gonna happen through the rest of the day, but by understanding 13 market moves, you actually have a chance to figure it out precisely, especially on certain days. You're not gonna be able to do it on every day. Not following your strategy 100% of the time will result in a fucking loss, okay? But what's more important, 
in this particular case and in a lot of other cases that you will never hear about because these guys will never actually admit what the fuck happened they're just gonna bitch and whine in this case it wasn't just the loss for this guy but it was an opportunity to go from a guy who borrows two hundred thousand dollars from his mom to being a millionaire we've just traded in four or five days with 13 market moves See, when he stayed with the strategy 100% of the time, when he was down on May 19th, he stayed with the strategy 100% uh, on Friday, he ended up wiring 257,000 out. Now, when he didn't stay with the strategy on May 24th, not only did he lose money, but he also missed the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost was huge. The opportunity cost was valued at a million dollars on the positions I gave this guy. So I invite you not to be the guy. I invite you to address the skeletons in the closet. If you have some emotional challenges when you trade, they need to be addressed. The faster you address the emotional challenges of trading, the faster your account is going to start growing. I promise you that. So in order to do that, sign up at 13marketmoves.com so you can beat the market with me or with another 13 Market Moves coach here in the next 30 days. Guys, Navy SEAL mentality is what's required. Many will try, few will make it. Do you think you have what it takes? Talk to us at 13marketmoves.com. Schedule a call with a coach today. Let's roll. I'll see you in the next video soon.